everybody, it's Matthew of Mr. Domestic, where I spread joy and positivity through sewing and fabric play. This video, I am going to walk you through the So Demented, So Together bag pattern. I got permission from her. I'm so jazzed to share this with y'all. So make sure you buy the pattern. The link is in the description. You need it. I'm not giving all of the information, but once everything is cut out and you're ready to get started sewing, that is where this tutorial starts. So if that's what you're here to learn, before we get into the content, anytime you're enjoying this, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Now let's get ready to have some fun together. So this is where I am starting with this tutorial. I'm not going to give any of the measurements for anything because you need to get the pattern for that. But these are the pieces all cut out and interfaced and prepped. So I'm using this for the exterior. These are going to be the zipper pockets. These are going to be the lining. That's the binding. This right here is the side panels and I have them interfaced. And then these are all of the zippers. I have three nine inch and one 18 inch. And I'm going to follow the order of the pattern. So I don't need this. I don't need these two right now. And I don't really need the zippers. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. And there are two things that you're going to do. One with the side panels. I'm gonna show you how to sew that. And then you're going to put these in order and I'll show you the order that I am going to put. So I'll take one of those and then a pair of the zipper pockets. And then this is going this way. And then a pair of the zipper pockets. Like this. I don't think it's gonna fit all on the camera, but you'll get the gist of it. And then one more of these. And for this, I'm gonna flip it over this way. And then one more pair of the zipper buckets. And then I have this. And so this is a mirror image of that. So I need to make sure it's like that. So that's the order that we're going to sew in. So from here, I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to show you how to sew these, the side panels per the instructions, and then I'm going to make the zipper sandwich with all of these. So let's head over to Felicia, she's back! Okay, first up, I'm going to sew these two right sides together. One doesn't have interfacing, one does, and I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. And now let's sew. Let's go here, then down. And just um, before I like move into fast forward action, just so you know, I popped on a denim needle and I'm just gonna use that for the whole thing because I'm lazy to switch, but there are gonna be parts where a denim needle would be best. So if you can find one, then um, snag it. I love using denim needles on bags. So now I'm gonna go around the perimeter and I will fast forward. I'm going to snip these corners. Do not cut that thread. Snip it. Snip it. Snip it good. And then I will turn this right side out. Take it over to my iron, press it, and then come back over and top stitch. So now see, look at, look at that. That right there, how pointy it is. It's because you snipped that off. If you didn't, it would be rounded. But I am going to top stitch at about an eighth of an inch. And it doesn't matter for me because I have the same color in the bobbin, but make sure if you are using two different colors that the top stitch, the desired thread is on the interface piece. And then I'm going to thread my machine. <laughs> And I will put it down here, and this is gonna be an estimate. There we go. I'm using just standard stitch length of 2.5. And I'll go around the perimeter and I'll fast forward now. Let's check out these stitches. Ooh, can you see it with the light? Ooh. 
Oh, Felicia, I missed you. <laughs> now I'm gonna go back over to my cutting mat and show you how I prep making okay, the zipper sandwich. Now that the two side pieces are finished, we're going to do the zipper sandwich and I'm gonna walk you through part of it, not through every single stitch. So I'm gonna remove these and then focus on these two. So, I want the arrows, how do I want them this way? Facing up, the trees, I think they're trees, it's a gorgeous fabric, here, and then I have one zipper here. And one thing I did not do that I generally do when installing zippers, I didn't get zippers longer than this. This is a nine inch zipper. I would suggest getting like a 10 or an 11 inch zipper or 12 inch. It just makes it a lot easier to install like my other videos. But let's go ahead and get started here. I have wonder tape. Don't do a zipper without wonder tape. I just do not. Move these two on the side. Grab my ironing mat. And then this is the order that it goes in. So, this right here goes right here, the wonder tape. And I found that tearing the wonder tape is a lot easier than, than cutting it. It just comes off easier like that. And then here's the zipper. This is the top, because you can tell from here. And then this goes here. Center it. Then you're gonna wanna open it all the way. It just is easier to, to sew. And then here, one more piece of Wonder Tape. And this is water soluble, so it washes out, but this just makes this process so much easier. And Put this on here like this. And then one step that is a must, in my opinion, is heat setting it. It just makes it so much easier. There's enough tack to where it will be fine, but heat setting it will keep it intact 100% and will eliminate any potential of it gumming up your needles as long as you let it cool. So I have prepped this. I'm gonna take it over to Felicia and stitch this and then prep the second one put my zipper foot on and this is where the the edge of the zipper is to try and make it even I'm just gonna stitch here and I've closed the zipper just a little bit since I didn't get a longer zipper to eliminate this worst case this is going to remind you and myself why to use a longer zipper and then this is what I do. I'm sure there's a better way, but then I like get it through because I don't want the needle to move for some reason. Like I just, and I know this is gonna look like way more dramatic than it, it needs to. I just wanna use a continuous piece of thread. So I will do this to get it on the other side of the zipper. And then I can continue. Because the zipper foot is over there. I just think, especially with zippers, because this is going to be a high utility like stitch, that I want it to be as secure as possible, and just having one single thread does that. So I've done this, and now I'm going to bring it back over to the mat to show you how to press this with an iron, just on both sides to cement that crease in, and it makes it a lot easier. And now I'm going to do the other side, and it's the same process. One layer of Wonder Tape. And when you're doing it, make sure to get it as close to the edge because this is a quarter inch. And you're going to sew on the outside of it as long as it's on the, the edge. But if you get it like closer than you, one, you'll be able to see it. And then two, it won't be inside of the seam allowance. So this one, find the top edge, line it up here. And I closed the zipper just so it's easier to line up all the edges. And then I'm going to flip it and then put another layer of Wonder Tape. And if you've never sewn a zipper, like I would suggest like doing one of my easier projects first, like the zipper pouch or the box pouch. So this goes like this, just so you can get the hang of it. And then this might make a little bit more sense to you if you're confused. So I've got that down. Now it's time to 
heat set it once again high heat high steam and then I will take you back over to Felicia again so now I'm over here and I'm gonna do the same exact thing find the edge of the zipper and stitch all the way to the end you'll have to fiddle with that thing again let's go ahead and fiddle with it now I'll do it so that you can see the drama where is it where is it oh this is gonna be extra special drama it's right here and then I just I lift up the foot because that creates enough space for this to go on the other side of it and ta-da that was like easy <laughs> That took zero time. Okay. And we go all the way to the edge. Like this. And then one other while we're here. I'm not going to do it to both sides, just to this side, since I've already pressed this side. You're going to want to switch feet back to your regular foot and go over here. And just edge stitch this. I'm going to use the edge of the foot that looks like it's roughly, I don't know, a quarter and eighth. It's something cute. And with this, I shouldn't have to fudge with this too much. Whew, look at that. It's going right under it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. And this just acts like more stability for this seam, and then it gives it some zhuzh. Boop, boop, boop. Let's look at the stitches. Boom. And you can vary this. If you wanted to go closer, an eighth of an inch, it's good. Then I'm gonna do this side, and then that is the process. Okay, and then off camera, I stitched both of these, and this is how I handled the next part. Like, I make sure that everything is flush. All four of the pieces of fabric like this are flush, and then this is going to get stitched to the new piece, the pocket. So I'm going to clip it right here. This is just to keep that in place. And then clip this right here. And then I trust that I cut and sewed this correctly. So I'm gonna use this as the guide and then just sew on this line. I'm not gonna pull too hard on this cause this will make this like waver. And then let me move this back here and then do this and just follow this line. And once again, I have the same thread in the bobbin, so it doesn't matter. So that can just be a best practice. Just put the same color in the bobbin. <laughs> then I'm going all the way over to the other side. And then I'll show you what the front lining part looks like. Ta-da! See, there is this line. Ooh, and it was good. I did a good job right here. That is what makes this pocket. Dun -dun -dun -dun. And you are going to go do this same thing one more time, and then one more time and then come back to me. Okay, now I am back over here and I have this done. Look at it, ooh la la. See, boom, boom, boom. And each time the pocket is secured on the same place. But I'll put this aside and the next part is this. Attaching this to the side and you're gonna use this. So fold this in half. This will be a little off. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold it right here. And then with, I'm using a chalk pencil. I'm just marking right here. Then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Wait, wait, this way. <laughs> right here and then there's one at the center so I'm going to from here 
since I know this is correct. From that line, I'll draw the center. And I'll just double check it before I start attaching stuff. And then this is going to be sewn to these. So now I'm going to go get my prep and I'll be back. Okay, so I redid the center marking and I found that this is the center, so it's a little askew, but it's correct on the outside, so yay! And I'm going to start with the center. And before I clip this, I'm going to cut off the excess on both sides like this. And let's not throw it on the floor. I just cleaned. <laughs> and then take some clips. And let's start on this side. What you are going to do is fold this on the line. See, there is where the line is. This is going to be a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch below. And then, let's do it, ah! let's do it right. Okay, there we go. Like this, and then fold it over. And it should be even here. You can even measure it there to make sure that it's good to go. And then just clip, 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 and clip. And now I'm going to go sew this on my sewing machine. I'm gonna do this one at a time, take my time for y'all and for myself too. <laughs> so, okay. So now I'm over here and I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance. So you wanna make sure that this fold is flush all the way over there so you don't miss out on stuff. You move it in place and then put this down and then start to sew. So, so, so. Since this is the beginning and the top, I'm going to backstitch and then sew back again. Boom, 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 boom. It's a lot of layers, folks. So this is the stage where the denim needle, in my opinion, is like needed because there are so many layers. And then boom, boom, shake the room. Just make sure, see, see the stitches? Boom. Boom, good. Now I'm gonna go back over to prep and do okay, the other so one. Okay, so one is done, the center one. And then now you have to attach the other two on this side. I'm gonna do one side before I move on to the other, just to make sure. Once again, trim off this. Don't need this. Here. Make sure all of this is flush once again. Keep it straight. And then you're going to need to look for this other line that you drew. And then I am going to position it this way just to make sure that it gets on the line. And then there, and then fold this over. Make sure it gets all of those layers. And then clip, clip, and clip. And then I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the other one. Make sure this is flush again. Flush, flush, flush. See how it's flush? And then bring this over. Oh, this bag is gonna be so pretty. Oh, I need to trim this. Like this. Make sure this just remains flush. Right here, quarter of an inch to a half of an inch here. Whatever it is, just for aesthetic purposes, make sure that like all of them are the same. And then fold this over like this. And then clip, clip, clip. And then I will take you back over to Felicia and sew these and show you that. I am back over at Felicia and I'm going to do the same thing here. Take off a clip, quarter of an inch, stitch a couple, back stitch, just to secure that. One more. And then sew all the way down. Removing the clips as you go.
back stitch there. I'm gonna make sure that I caught everything. Ooh, I caught it, it's good. I caught it, it's good. And then now this other one. And I always start from the top instead of from the bottom. I just find it cleaner, overall cleaner. Okay, and then there. Ooh, I got a thread. Boop, boop. No, boop. I sure did miss Felicia. She's fancy. <laughs> okay, now stitch. Back stitch. And then go. A little car crash there, and I realized that was not the best way to sew it. It was being problematic. So I flipped this. I was sewing it like this. I have flipped it this way, so you need to know where a quarter of an inch and so since this is the center, I know it's the same on the other side, and I am sewing this way. It just was getting too clunky the other way, and this seems to be the simpler way to, to stitch it. So get started, back stitch, then stitch. Yes, I'm so much easier. I can already feel it. And then sit all the way down. And then back stitch again. And then now, there is one half of it. Ta da! Now do the same thing to this other side. And I'm going to do that off camera and then come back. did something that I wanted to show y'all in this that I made a mistake and I remember I did this the first time too that see here how it does this this right here needs to be like this right here and this right here need to be the same length the reason that this right here is too short is because one this I stitched it too low like I need to make this gap longer which I did on the other side and then this was not a quarter of an inch it was a little bit larger than a quarter of an inch so I went down to a quarter of an inch on the other side and look look at the difference see they're the same size like that and eventually and you can test this out like as you're before you sew like if you want to avoid this totally you need this to be the same length as this. See, it's the same length. On this side, it is not the same length. This ends up too short and it's not gonna work. So you might need to tweak how low you put the zippers and how wide you have the seam allowance in order to get this perfectly. Once again, you could do this with clips before you even start sewing to make sure that it's all correct. So yay, learning, sharing the is The next caring. step in this is attaching this to this in preparation of adding the final zipper and the binding. And how I do this is I wanna set that center pocket right here in the proper space. That's the most important to me. And it's pretty clear where the center is. But let me mark it. I have a Sharpie. Boop, boop. Gonna mark it there. And then gonna mark it there. Right there. So this is marked. Don't, don't. And then I'm gonna place this on here. And I want this to be right on the mark. Like so. And then I'm gonna clip on either side of it just to keep it in place. Right here. And then I'm gonna do the other side. Find the mark, there's the mark. And clip it in place on both sides of it. Here. And then these two are just gonna fall in line. 
I line this up here. See it's lined. Then I'm gonna clip this right here to put this one in place. Like this. And then he, if there's any excess here on this, it's totally gonna work out whenever you sew it, so no sweat it. And then I'll do this side. And then so there we go. And voila, that's all of the clipping that I am going to do. So now we are over at Felicia and I have this lined up here and I moved this over that way, the needle, like three or four like don't don'ts, so that it will be inside of the quarter inch seam with the um what's it called the binding <laughs> so i'm gonna go around here oh, let me increase the length okay now i put it to 3.5 length since this is technically basting pivot now i'm gonna go up this corner the thing with the basting stitch instead of a traditional stitch is let's say that it um, is seen after you do the binding, then it's easier to remove than a traditional snitch. Okay, and then this is something that I do in this. These little things, these danglies, they are going to become part of the bag. So I push them, see how the ding, ding, ding. I push them toward the back of the bag and the back of the bag is the one with the line on it with that seam right here so i go like this and then just get this in here if you do it now it's so much easier to bind and then leave this in here and then i'm gonna make it go backwards again boom 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 like this and then push this one back and then I am going to do the flappy part this part right here I forgot to do it on the other thing over there I'm going to do it in a second It's in there. And now I'm going to fast forward the rest of it. Okay, I'm back over to this. And just one thing. This, again, is going to go towards the back. So instead of doing it that way, which I did on the other side, I'm going to flip the dangly this way. I'll get back to fast forwarding. So the two longer strips I have folded, and these are for binding, and the shorter of the two, this one, is going to be for the side edges right here. And if you've never bound anything before, I have a tutorial about binding a couple of them. I would go and watch them. But if you're a quilter and you know how to bind, then this is just the double fold technique. And so I'm gonna start on one end, this right there is set at a quarter of an inch. Okay. And then put all the raw edges right here. And then stitch this binding in place. That's why it's good. You've already dealt with the dangly things. Woo! Let me slow you down, Felicia. Like this. And I really want to hand bind it. I think that hand binding looks the best. And I know it's hard for me to say that because I don't like to do it. But in the bag, hand binding looks best. But I am going to go ahead and um, attempt to machine bind it nicely so that you can see it if that's what you want to do. Fast forward. 
Okay, I am ready to sew this. And yes, it's all prepared off camera. If you've never seen, I love glue. I glue basted this down so that I could stitch it. It just makes it so much simpler. I don't have to fuss with it. And as long as this edge is over the stitch line in there, where is it? Don't want to take out the glue. Then you are good to go and you can do this. But if you are not in that over the stitch line, then this won't work. So from here, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to stitch in the ditch. So now I'm going to stitch in the ditch. Just trying to get in there. If you see some of the thread, whatever, it's totally fine because you have top stitching elsewhere and it won't look out of place. But the idea behind this is if you stitch in the ditch perfectly, then you won't be able to see it. You'll just see the top stitch on the outside. Okay, so see? You can't really see the thread. It's pretty awesome. But then let's flip it over to the other side. And then see, you can see it. There's the top stitch. It goes with everything else. It's good to go. So with these done, now it's time to sew the zipper on and the binding. And I do it in two separate steps just so that I can keep track of it. And so I've marked the center. Can you see it? The center point there. And on the zipper. So just because I'm going to have all of the zipper pulls go this way and then match up those two spots. Boom, boom, boom. And then I will clip that spot once. And I'm again going to baste this. So I'll lengthen the stitch a little bit and just sew this in place. It'll make it so much easier right here. It doesn't matter here. It's going to be hidden in the binding, so I'm doing it probably at an eighth of an inch, estimated. And just sew this, and then do it with the other side of the zipper too, like open it up. Let me get to that point. Boom, boom. Mm, this bag, this bag. Okay. And then it just becomes easier if you open the zipper like this to get the other side and then just make sure that the zipper doesn't get all tangled up and twisted because you can't fix it once it's twisted and sewn on and then I'm matching up again the center points boom 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 once again clipping and then I'm gonna sew this and I'll do that off camera So this next part where you're attaching this to the zipper, this is just so you can see, it's this way. And I'm going to put the binding here and I'm not pre-basting it or using wonder tape because I'm going to have to maneuver halfway down. So if this gets a little fudgy, it's totally cool. But if you wanted to clip or bind the binding to the zipper, how about it? So now I am sewing. And zippers are much easier to attach when they're open. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm not even going to do this with one thread. I'm not worried about it. And then I'm going to move the zipper and open it. See, opened it. And now I'm going to go back and sew the zipper. It's going to be inside of the binding. So here it's okay if it's not a continuous thread. And then I'm going to continue to sew this all the way down. Fast forwarding. So now with this zipper tab, there's one open spot and then one not open spot. Boom, boom, boom. Hopefully the fast forward videos made sense to you. 
before. And then with these, you just stick this in here. And for me, I want it to go past that. I don't want it to go all the way through because I want this space to sew into the bottom. It makes it easier than sewing through all those layers. So this is in, and then I am just going to top stitch here. I'm gonna go one pass here. And one thing with universal like polyester nylon zippers is you can zip right or sew right through them, they get through no problem. And then I'm going backwards. If you don't have this function, then just pivot it around. I just want this to be super strong because this is a major tension point in the back. Okay. Okay, right, ta-da, this is done. I'm gonna trim this up. I'll trim it later. <laughs> and then open this all the way to get it here. And this is what I am going to do. So I have it flipped to where all the stuff is that way. And then I know where my center is. It's right here. And I'm just not even gonna mess with that stitch in the ditch stuff. And I am just going to try and follow the stitch line that's already there. Like I'm estimating. If I'm off, whatever. See, and I'm continuing that natural stretch line. Boom. And then I'm going backwards. And then after this, you have yourself a finished sew together rag. <laughs> You can make this sew together bag. This is like one of those like rites of passage bags. You have to make it and you see everyone with it like in your quilting guild or friends and then you try and it's hard, but hopefully this tutorial can get you through this pattern so that you can be a proud owner of a sew together bag. So if you enjoyed this video, got a laugh, a tip or a trick, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Keep it positive y'all. Mr. Domestic out. <laughs>